There we go. Oh, awesome. But, but you wanted me to do Hit record. The record version. Play. Play. Record. record. Exactly. Hit the record down here. Yep. Three, two, all right. one. Thank you. Awesome. Wow, thank you all so much for having me here today. I'm really proud to be part of the first uh, Drupal North up here in Toronto. Um, I spent a lot of time up here in Canada. I ran the first uh, venture-backed Drupal startup company called Now Public out of Vancouver for about seven years. Um, so I'm thrilled to be back here. Uh, I work for Acquia out of the office of the CTO for Dries, the founder of Acquia and Drupal, where I run a division of Acquia called Large Scale Drupal. Large Scale Drupal is about engaging organizations in open source, enabling them to truly leverage open source and fully realize the benefits that open source can bring to your organization. And that's a lot about what I'm going to talk to you about today. You know, what we do is we help organizations adopt the tools and methodologies that have helped Drupal, Drupal grow and become one of the largest and most successful open source projects in the world. So simply put, by you know, enabling organizations to work together, you know, we form a strategic alliance. Uh, we can reduce the costs uh, by creating an economy of scale, uh, and we can create better software through the input of many minds. We have over 60 really amazing organizations uh, and four uh, beta partners that we're working with, and we have some really cool collaborative projects going across organizations like Major League Soccer and Pac-12. So it's, it's really exciting to see organizations come together uh, and, and work together in an open source community. Uh, before I begin, though, I just want to say thank you to Angie and Ezra, who uh, helped with this presentation, uh, provided some slides and some input and feedback. Uh, and of course, in the spirit of open source, uh, there's a link there if you guys are interested in using any aspect of this presentation uh, for yourselves. You're welcome to do so. Uh, you can download it or just drop me an email, and I'm happy to share it. Um, I thought I'd step back for a second. In, in Los Angeles, uh, at the DrupalCon keynote a couple of months ago, Dries did this great retrospective, and I thought, you know, it, it kind of blew my mind to see what we've achieved and accomplished. And so I just wanted to step back for a second and, and point out that Drupal is one of the largest and most successful open source projects in the world. You know, we have over a million users on Drupal.org. We have an unbelievable collaborative community of individuals that come together to create the software that we all use, right? Over 25,000 individuals create that uh, module base that we all glue together to, you know, get our sites out. You know, there's over 2,600 contributors just to Drupal core for Drupal 8 alone. Um, and just to put this into context, uh, well, you know, it's apples and oranges, but Linux, since they started tracking contributions to their project 10 years ago, they've had just under 12,000 contributors. And so Drupal has an unbelievably vibrant community that comes together to create the software. It's, it's really unprecedented. Uh, and another really cool thing about Drupal is that we power millions of websites, right? And we're not talking about just personal blogs. We're talking about every industry and sector, right? Major organizations in healthcare and finance, retail, organizations like Fiverr, and Johnson & Johnson are transforming their business and how they go to market through tools like Drupal. They're dropping their costs by 50 and 60 percent. They're rolling things out 50 to 60 percent faster. Right? We're truly changing the face of business in these industries. Almost every major media company in the world has you know, some Drupal website. Organizations like NBC Universal have standardized on Drupal. Right? They have over 100 Drupal websites for major properties, including several top 100 websites. Seven out of eight U.S. universities, uh, and this extends out through the rest of the world, similarly, um, you know, are using Drupal. Uh, they, they do some amazing things. I'll talk a little bit more about that momentarily. One out of three, you know, 33% of U.S. government websites use Drupal. And we're not talking about just small sites here. You know, we're talking about the ability to scale to serve the most complex and sophisticated needs in the world, right? We're talking about whitehouse.gov, the largest government website in the world. Right? We're talking about uh, weather.com, a top 10 website, you know, when they're in, 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 and higher when there are you know, major weather events in the world. Uh, my alma mater, examiner.com, or NBC Sports, the Olympics. Um, there are also many organizations you know, that don't just serve you know, millions of pages every day, but there are organizations that rely on Drupal for mission-critical, can't-fail, one-day, must-happen events, right? like Grammys. Music's biggest night for the last five or six years has relied on Drupal, right? These organizations, you know, have to scale up massive traffic amounts instantly and then drop back down. Another great example, uh, Turner Broadcasting, which does uh, the NCAA and March Madness. They literally spent 11 years out of the month preparing for one month 
that literally drives billions of dollars of revenue for the company, hundreds of millions of dollars of which are generated online. If they have a failure, they literally can't recover from it. Like it just cascades. It's so critical that they are up. You're not talking about an individual losing your job. You're talking about divisions of people losing their job and a material impact to a company, right? If that website doesn't succeed. And so Drupal, you know, the software that we've come together to create um, has really enabled businesses to drive their needs. Um, and, and the thing is that, you know, not, you know, no one has a single website anymore. Now, I have multiple websites personally, right? Most organizations have, you know, a couple hundred websites. EDUs, you know, some of the EDUs that we work with have over 10,000 websites, right? They want to enable everyone in their organization to be able to quickly spin up a website for their own needs while maintaining security and compliance issues, you know, providing guardrails so they can use their system. Uh, Warner Music Group uses it to power all of their artists. The National Basketball Association uses it to power all of their you know, basketball teams. So really, we've created this amazing platform that can do everything from serve the individual needs of a local and state government or a small business or you know, your personal blog and scale all the way up to a top 10 website and everywhere in between. Um, but as astounding and remarkable as you know, Drupal, the software is, What's really amazing and, and, and powerful is the community behind Drupal. And Eric talked and touched on this you know, in, in, his, in his segment, you know, in introduction earlier. Uh, and Dries said, you know, it's really the Drupal community and not so much the software that makes the Drupal project what it is. So fostering the Drupal community you know, is actually more important than just managing the code base. What makes Drupal great are the many minds, the perspectives, you know, the ideas. It's the contributors, it's the people in the room today who come and participate and show up and create this amazing community. So you guys all deserve a round of applause for coming today. This is you know, a great form of participation. What's driving it? There you go. <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> Innovation is driving Drupal's growth and adoption, right? Um, you know, the success of the platform has been astounding. And with each major release of Drupal, we have more than doubled the size of the Drupal community. And we're on track to, to more than do this with Drupal 8 already. Uh, we've, you know, more than doubled the size of our contributor base, the install base. Um, and, you know, today we have this amazing global community of Drupal. There are over 500 local meetups every week that you can go to around the world uh, it, it's just astounding. I mean, it was, it was so cool to see that group of people up here on the stage before from all the different local user groups that have come together to put on this conference here today. It takes a tremendous amount of effort and energy. Um, and it's this community that's driving innovation. And that's what, you know, it makes Drupal what it is. And I'll give you a, an example of the breathtaking speed that this community can operate at. In 2011, Google launched their new social network, Google+. And uh, this happened around June 28th. Literally, like less than 48 hours later, Ryan Sarsma released a Drupal module integrating with Google Plus before Google even had an API to integrate with Google Plus. You know, we had basic integration capabilities, but in the true spirit of community, he says, I'm open to ideas on how to develop this further. Don't be shy about posting ideas to the issue queue, you know, and I'm also looking forward to having you know, a full API to play with, right? We are a community that fosters contribution. We want more people to get engaged. Um, there's no doubt that Drupal benefits from your participation, right? If you guys have seen uh, Dries' keynote from DrupalCon Amsterdam, where he talked about open source scaling and sustainability. Uh, if you're interested in that stuff, phenomenal talk. I highly recommend you check it out. Um, you know, Drupal's getting more and more complex. It used to be that you could be a master of, of most subsystems, or at least half a dozen. Right? You could be a maintainer of multiple subsystems. Today, it's a full-time job to be the maintainer of any single subsystem, let alone to coordinate communication across subsystems. You know, forget about your full-time job, <laughs> you know, family life, you know, personal activities. Right? And so you know, we definitely need to get more people involved in Drupal to continue this amazing growth you know, and this unprecedented success. You know, clearly, only by working together can we achieve this. Um, so really what I want to talk about is, you know, while Drupal needs you, why do you need Drupal? Why should you get engaged and involved in open source and the community? Um, you know, and simply put, you know, for many of us, or most of us, your career, your business, 
uh, is or is about to be you know, driven in large part by Drupal, right? So it really behooves you to be part of that rising tide. And that's what I want to talk about is, you know, how is it, you know, why is it that you should get involved in the Drupal community? A lot of people say, oh, it's about altruism and giving back and social responsibility. And it can be about that, right? And that's, that's a great thing. But more importantly to me, it is, uh, you know, I think it is a way to you know, radically improve your career, to change the way you do business, to grow your company. Uh, there are tremendous business benefits, and that's what I want to talk about. Why should you adopt uh, open source? Why should you get involved? There are tremendous benefits and advantages from participating. And so I'll walk through uh, first some personal things. You know, what is it that you as an individual can get out of uh, open source? I want to talk about uh, organizations uh, you know, and users, uh, are many of our clients that use Drupal and how they can benefit you know, from organizationally getting involved. And then I know that there are a lot of agencies here and development shops and people that make a living off of developing Drupal. And I want to talk a, a little bit about how that helps you. As an individual, you know, coming to an event like this today, you have an opportunity to meet some amazing people, right? I have an opportunity to catch up with old friends, people I haven't seen in a couple of years, um, opportunity to meet new people. Invariably, I'm going to learn about amazing tools, projects, solutions, and I may not be able to leverage them tomorrow or in a couple of weeks, but I assure you from spending over a decade in this community, a couple of months down the line, a problem is going to come up with one of the clients I work with or a project that I'm working on. You know, oh man, I, 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 you know, have you, you know, heard about this? You know, do you know this person over here? You know, I went to Drupal North uh, and I reconnected with Khalid. He's got this amazing project going on and it's going to solve your needs, right? Uh, I don't just know about that. I've had the opportunity to meet with him, to sit down with him, to talk about it. I've formed a relationship with him, right? So doers have tremendous insight and awareness, you know, which is going to help them execute. Uh, and also, simply showing up to an event is a simple form of participation. And one of the things I want to point out is that you, know, you needn't sign over your life to Drupal. You know, certainly, you know, many people uh, get very engaged. It is a big and important part of what they do. But there's a full spectrum of what you can do and how you can contribute. Uh, and it's not expected that you know, everyone is going to dedicate you know, their lives and their careers to this. But definitely, the more that you put in to open source and getting engaged, the more that you're going to get out. Right? Doers and people that get involved in the community learn and grow and accelerate their career. It is some of the best free training and education that you can get. Not only are there actual little training sessions at the beginning of these conferences, you know, we had yesterday, we had, you know, Pantheon had a training session and there was a Drupal 8 training session. You, know, you have the opportunity to learn the latest you know, best practices. And if you get engaged in things like Drupal core development, you're literally building the next generation of best practices and tools that the rest of the world is going to be adopting. Right? Drupal 8 is coming out later this year. People have been working on it for three years. Most people are going to begin to start adopting that over the next six to 12 months. Right? So we have you know, thousands of experts that are literally leading the world in technology. And there's no barrier to entry. You can be a part of that group. You can come, you can show up, and you can collaborate with and learn from your peers. And you can accelerate your career and take it to the next level. Doers also tend to get much better help, and they tend to get it faster. I'm not guaranteeing you that if you get engaged in the community, we're going to solve all your problems. That's not what we're here for, and that's not how it works. But frankly, no one has all the answers, right? We all get stuck from time to time. We all need a little help from our friends. And it's just human nature. We're really busy people. My inbox is overflowing. Forget about inbox zero. I gave up on that concept years ago, right? Um, I've got a ton going on. I'm sure you guys all do. People reach out to me all the time and they say, oh, I have a question. Can you introduce me to this person? I need help with this. If you're not on my priority list, you're not a, you know, a client I'm dealing with, you know, you're not a close personal friend, you know, it's going to be really challenging for me to find the time to help you. But if you're you know, Mo Schweitzman or Alex Pott or you know, any individual that maybe has helped me and my business or you know, helped me succeed, helped the platform grow, you better believe I'm going to try and find time to go out of my way to try and help you because you've helped me. Right? And so you know, I can't tell you the number of people in the community that have jumped in and helped my businesses and my initiatives over the year because of my participation in the community. It's, it's unbelievably you know, astounding to see what people are willing to do you know, and, and the success that they want to see for Drupal on a platform. Another really important factor is that doers have a much stronger voice. Right? 
One of the great things about open source is that it puts you in the driver's seat of technology, right? It gives you the opportunity to control and shape the tools and platform that you use, right? You just don't have to wait for someone's roadmap. You can fix bugs, you can add features, functionality, you can do whatever you want with it, right? But affecting change from the outside can be really difficult. Right? I remember over you know, 10, 11 years ago, uh, 12 years ago, geez, time flies, you know, I submitted my first patch to Drupal. People were like, who is this dude? You have to gain credibility in a community. Right? You have to form trust in relationships. You know, yeah, you can affect change and you, know, you, you can improve Drupal having never showed up, but it's significantly easier to get your ideas and to collaborate with people and to make change you know, if you're part of that community, you get engaged and involved. So your changes are much more likely to be accepted faster. Again, not a guarantee that your changes are going to be accepted at all, <laughs> uh, but, but it you know, happens typically. The other thing is, you know, it, it, it's really not just about work. You know, we are not automatons. You know, we make sure that we have a tremendous amount of fun in the process. Um, you know, through Drupal, I have had the opportunity to meet really amazing people, to develop lifelong friendships. It has turned the world into a village. Literally, you know, I have the opportunity to travel around the world. I'm very fortunate. And everywhere I go, I know someone through Drupal. I'm connected to world events and society around me. More important than that, I feel like I'm part of something bigger than myself, right? I talk to my friends. I, I live in New York City. We have a really active and awesome, vibrant startup technology scene. And I meet my friends that work for all these cool startups. They're like, oh, look at what I'm building. And I'm like, you know, and I, I don't want to poo-poo what they're doing. It's cool. But I'm like, oh, that's so cute. You're building a website. Like, I'm building an ecosystem of millions of websites, right? I'm helping the world transform the way that they, you know, uh, look at and, and, and build technology, right? And to think that maybe I've had a small part in, in creating and shaping this amazing thing, you know, that's Drupal, that's helping local and state governments, that's helping educational institutions, that's helping nonprofits, you know, as well as businesses succeed and transform, that I've had the opportunity to be part of that is, I think, truly remarkable and rewarding in its own right. And literally sometimes makes, you know, the hair on the back of my neck stand up when I see, you know, the growth of the community and how it transforms people's lives and businesses. And so, you know, I, I, I think that's an important thing. So clearly, you know, tremendous benefits for you as an individual. I've just touched on a few high-level goals. You know, you should really get involved, you know. But what about business, right? This isn't just about personal growth. And certainly if you run a business, I would hope that you would want everyone on your team to grow and excel and be the best that they can be. And for those reasons, you know, you should certainly encourage your employees to get engaged in an event like this in the Drupal community and to grow and to build their career. But beyond that, there's tremendous business benefits for you and your organization to get involved and to contribute to Drupal. And uh, I'll tell a little story that I call a tale of two cities. Uh, it's a cheeky little story about two enterprises, and I'll give you some uh, real world examples along the way. We have uh, two main characters in our story. The first is DIY Corp, do-it-yourself company. And their company motto is, we've been reinventing the wheel since 2003. And their corporate headquarters, of course, is in the silos next to the waterfall. Yeah, I thought this was going to be a little touchy, so I thought I'd go with a story here. <laughs> um, and our second is Collab Inc. And their motto, you know, there's a module for that. And of course, they're, you know, a bunch of hippie tree huggers, and their, their headquarters is, is out in the forest somewhere. Let's talk about a common scenario, right? Organizations adopt Drupal either as a critical aspect of their business or powering their web technology. Invariably, you're going to have to extend that at some point that you're using it. Let's look at the two different approaches that these organizations are going to take and how it affects their business. DIY Carp, they want to extend Drupal. What do they do? Well, logically to them, when you're operating in a vacuum, you either write code or you hire someone to write code, right? You've got to solve the problem, right? So that's what you do. You jump in and you write code. You take what improvements that you make to Drupal and you host them locally, right? You put them in a private code repository. You don't share them in the world. No one else knows about it. You created it. You funded it. You own the long-term support, the cost, the maintenance, the upgrades, the enhancements, everything. You're solely responsible for it. And if you have a problem with your code, you run into a bug, an edge case, you're not sure what's going on, you don't have too many options because you created the problem or the people you hired created that problem. You have no one to turn to. You're not part of the community. So your option is to whip out the debugger, a stiff drink, get down to work, and try and figure out what the hell is going on with your website and your system. On the flip side, we have Collab Inc. What do they do when they need to extend Drupal? Well, the first thing that they do is they look into the community to see if there's already a solution to solve their problems. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. That takes time. That takes money. 
you know, I've built a lot of, you know, login systems and click and do that. So I, you know, I, I don't need to prove that I can do that. So, you know, the first thing they want to do is see if there's a solution they can quickly leverage or something that's close enough, right? Maybe they can, you know, take a kernel and build upon it, but it saves them a tremendous amount of time. More importantly, it creates a community, right? Um, you know, they're not going to go off and create software on their own. If there isn't a solution that doesn't yet exist, what they're going to do is they're going to create a new project on Drupal.org. From the moment they start, not after they build the code, when they're done with it, they're not going to release it later. That's still better than nothing, but they want engagement from the very beginning. They want to engage people in their ideas. They want to form a community around this code so they can share the upgrades, the enhancements, the bug fixes, the long-term support and maintenance so they can work together to build software to drive down costs. <laughs> so they're going to share it publicly and when they get stuck, they're going to reach out to a global community. They're going to reach out to the friends that they met at Drupal North, and they're going to say, hey, I know you're using this piece of software too. Did you run into this problem? How did you solve it? Right? Maybe there's a solution on Google. Right? I, I can't tell you the number of times I, you know, I do development by search. Right? <laughs> you know, how do I fix this? And we just talked about you know, the Drupal 8 development for the conference website, you know, searching Twitter. Right? There's a whole community that you can rely on to reach out to to get help and support and to, to grow your business. And, and here's a great real world example of that. Uh, five star module does exactly what it says, which makes it such a great example. You can literally rate a piece of content from zero to five stars. It was originally developed by Lollabot, one of the first uh, Drupal consulting companies, a really well known company in the, uh, in the ecosystem. And Jeff Eaton is going to be giving the keynote uh, tomorrow, I believe. Uh, they built it on behalf of a client, Sony BMG, who had moved all of their artists over to Drupal. And they were on Drupal 5. Well, Warner Music Group, a direct competitor to BMG, comes along and says, we're going to move all of our artists to Drupal. It's a great idea. And actually, we need to rate content and items too. So we're going to use your five-star module. Some people go, oh my god, you know, I can't believe direct competitor giving their competition a leg up. But what really happened is that WMG, around a year later, ported their website to Drupal 6. And along the way, they added feature enhancements, they fixed some bugs, they improved the software. And just about that time, Sony BMG was going through the process and said, man, okay, Drupal 6 is out, it's got all these great new features, we want to upgrade, we've got all this work to do. Well, they went online and it turns out that they could just download the module. <laughs> right? And so, uh, you know, their upfront investment you know, created a community around that software that literally upgraded it from version to version, improved it, and now you know, they were able to just download it and get up and running with it. And so what these organizations are doing is they're forming a strategic alliance, right? This co-opetition. They're saying, we're willing to work together on areas of technology that are not core or unique to our business value. We are about creating awesome artists and music and great content. We don't care about five-star rating systems and slideshows or any of the, you know, web technology things that are going on. That's not who we are. It's not what we do. Technology is a commodity to us. This is a cost center. You know? And so they're willing to put their differences aside, form that strategic alliance, and work together. And it's transforming their businesses. Another very common scenario, I hear this from pretty much every client, every partner that I work with, any hot technology, there's a very hard time for organizations to attract and retain top talent. And I have these major world brands, these you know, household names come up to me and say, Mike, I don't understand why I can't hire Drupal talent. Everybody knows who we are. Everybody loves us. And no one wants to come work for me. I say, what are you doing? Well, DIY Carp, which has downloaded Drupal and is operating in a vacuum, they go out and they post to generic job boards all over the world. And they say, hey, we're this great company. You love us. Come work for us and do cool things. But, you know. As a Drupal developer, I'm not really going to hot jobs or whatever it is people you know, search these days for, for jobs. I'm a little out of touch with the job search thing. Um, and you know, they're really unknown to the larger Drupal community. They've never come to a Drupal conference. They have no technology brand. They may be a household name, but I'm not interested in coming to work with them. I Maybe I'll wear their, their you know, whatever it is they make, or I'll use their products. I'm trying to be careful not to mention any one company. <laughs> um, but you know, they... Uh, you know, they're, they're in a really tough spot because no one knows who they are in the technology world. They have no reputation. Uh, and worse, they have very limited insight into their applicants. I can't tell you the number of times individuals have applied to a job at a company I've worked at where they boast about or embellish about you know, what it is that they did for a particular project. Right? 
The only way that you can really get a sense of things is through referrals and references. Maybe you put them through some sort of like, you know, exercise or exam before you hire them. You know, you're doing your best to kind of figure out who is this person? What is it that they're truly capable of? You know, what am I getting into here? And, I, you know, frankly, a lot of times, you know, I'm, I mean, I shouldn't be surprised anymore, but you pick up the phone, you check the references, and they say, oh, actually, no, they weren't the lead in this project. They were an intern, right? <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, really, it's really hard to see. And so, you know, the last thing I want to point on here is you are providing a disincentive for people like me to come and work for your company. I talked about career growth earlier, you know, learning, advancing yourself. You know, I want to do awesome things and I want to go work for a company that's going to let me do awesome things and that wants me to be a better person. It's going to help me grow, right? And so if you're, you know, not enabling your talent to do this, you're not going to be a great draw, no matter how great and world-renowned your brand is, frankly. Collab Inc., on the other hand, they attend and sponsor conferences like Drupal North, right? They're a big part of their community. They know people in their local markets, right? They already have a pipeline that they're generating. This is not going to solve your talent problem overnight. You know, I'm not saying that there is a, a quick, I'll give you a good idea later, but there are, there are typically no quick fixes to solving your talent problem. But I've worked with major organizations and I've helped them get more engaged in the community and I have seen them transform from you know, having absolutely no Drupal talent, churning and flailing with their technology, to having recruited an amazing group of people and being able to achieve you know, just astounding things. And it's about getting into the community, talking about the cool things you're doing, and saying, hey, we're open to, to working with you, right? The community, you know, I formed a brand. They know who, I'm, who I am. They know what I'm doing with technology. So I'm not just a brand. I'm a cool technology brand in a place that, that people want to go. I'll go into a little bit more detail on this, but open source is about transparency, right? So I have unprecedented insight into the people that I'm about to hire. I can do very strategic recruiting, and I have great insight and can do analysis. And because I'm enabling my resources to be part of a global community to contribute to a project, I'm providing an incentive for their growth and career, right? Now I'm a really attractive place to work, even if I'm not a great brand. You know, I, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example in a minute here. Um, We'll use WebChick uh, as the example. She's obviously uh, not looking for a job. Um, uh, but you know, the first thing that I want to do when I'm going to go out and hire a new individual is I'm going to look at their Drupal.org page. I can't tell you the number of times I've tried to hire a Drupal engineer and they said, oh, I have six years of experience in Drupal. I'm a senior Drupal developer. And I said, great. What's your Drupal.org, Nick? I, I want to go check it out. I said, oh, I, I don't have one. Are, are you kidding me? Like, I'm really skeptical at this point. Right? So you're saying you've been developing open source software. You consider yourself a senior developer. You know, and and maybe, maybe that's possible. But I'm going to be extremely skeptical that you're claiming that you're a senior developer and you don't have any code or any reputation in this community. So we're already, you know, you know, I can look at Angie's user profile. I can see, oh, she's been a member of this community for over eight years. She's pretty senior. I can look at what it is that she's contributed to the project. How does she work? Angie actually documents code. I'm in love. <laughs> like, who documents code, right? More importantly than that, I can see what it is that she works. One of the ways that I've solved my talent problem in the past, and, and here is a quick fix that can help you, is I go through Drupal and I see who's contributing to what projects. Well, when I was at Examiner and now Public, we were doing a lot of work around multimedia systems, right? Or caching and performance and scalability. So I reached out to the leading contributors and I said, hey, it doesn't look like you're being paid to do this. I think you're doing this on your personal time. I want to hire you to work full time on making Drupal faster. I guarantee you that the majority of the code that you create that we're going to open source. We're going to be a big part of the Drupal community. We're going to help shape and drive the future of Drupal. Within a year, I had 15 of the top 100 contributors working for me. So, you know, organization is sitting saying, I can't find talent. You're not approaching talent in the way that they need to be approached to attract them. Beyond that, you know, I can see how an individual represents themselves in a community. Again, it's not about what you tell me, it's about what I see. You know, are you a senior developer? Okay, well, are you in the forums asking lots of questions or are you actually helping other people and answering questions, right? You know, are you a douchebag or are you polite? You know, are you a good person, right? Do I want to work with you? You know, I get a sense of you in the interview pretty quickly, but you know, I want to see what you're like under pressure. Right? When the shit hits the fan, I want to know how you're going to react and how you hold yourself up as part of a community because you represent not just yourself, but me as an organization. 
right? And I can see exactly what you've contributed. I don't need to put you through an exam. I can look at the code that you've contributed to the project, and I can tell whether or not you're a great developer, whether or not your interests, approach, and methodologies align with what I'm looking for. And I can get a much better sense of what I'm getting into when I hire you as a resource to come work for me. So clear benefits for you, clear benefits for an organization. I want to shift for a minute and talk specifically about you know, development shops and agencies and why this is really good for you. Because I know there are a lot of folks here, I'm just quick at a show of hands, who here works for or does you know, Drupal development as their you know, primary job. Wow, okay, so this will be uh, great. This really differentiates you from the competition. The agencies and partners of Acquia that I talk to that are meaningfully engaged in the community see a remarkable difference in their business and how companies approach them, right? It is a differentiating factor. You think about it, if you're a client and you're gonna go out and you're gonna hire an organization to help you build a Drupal website. Would you rather choose an organization that builds on top of a platform, or would you rather choose the organization that's meaningfully engaged in actually creating and building out that underlying framework? Well, all things being equal, if I can afford to hire that organization that is meaningfully contributing to Drupal, that gives me tremendous confidence in your capabilities and your abilities to solve my problem. Right? Everyone thinks they're a unique snowflake with these crazy needs. And so organizations are going to see you as an expert, not just as an implementer in this platform. And it's going to give you a significant competitive advantage. It's also going to help you win business. I talked to several of the organizations like Chapter 3 uh, that has Alex Pott, a full-time employee that they invest in Drupal. He's one of the five core committers in the world. Uh, App Innovation, Phase 2, FFW has two core contributors. You know, these organizations are saying this is a really worthwhile investment because since we've done that, organizations have approached us and said, we want you to bid on this project. Or forget about bidding, we want you to do this project, right? They're getting leads and business because they are experts in the community. And again, organizations want to go out and want to work with not just people who implement Drupal, but the leaders and the people that are shaping the platform. So it gives them tremendous confidence in your capabilities. And more, you know, most importantly to business, this is about money, right? If you could build the same thing twice as fast and half as you know, costly, you're making more money, right? You're doing things better, faster, cheaper. And that is what open source is enabling many organizations to do, but it's about how you use open source and not just about downloading it. That's not gonna give you a 50% savings. What's driving you know, Pfizer and Johnson and Johnson to drop their costs and their rollout times by 50, 60% is because they're doing things like leveraging the tools and technologies and the methodologies of Drupal so they have an internal distribution of Drupal, right? A Drupal distribution that they leverage to quickly stand up their, their new websites, right? So they don't have to glue together 20 different modules. They have a couple base configurations that they can quickly templatize and pull together. So they can, you know, it used to be they had to get a hosting account and set up a website and literally, you know, in, in an hour or, or less, you know, minutes, people can spin up websites with absolutely no technology experience, right? And so it, it is transforming the way that your company is going to do business and it's money in your pocket because you're, you're literally going to be doing things better, faster, and cheaper. So, you know, Drupal is a global community of people and organizations. And you can benefit from downloading Drupal and using it in a vacuum. It's a great piece of software. You don't have to give back. You, know, you don't have to participate in the community. But if you really want to get, you know, the true value and benefits of open source and Drupal, it behooves you to get engaged in the community because Drupal is really about a set of methodologies and best practices and a global community of people and working together in that community with those best practices to develop software. And, and when you do that, that is when you really see the, the true benefits of you know, building. So I hope you're sitting here right now on the edge of your seat saying, all right, Mike, I can't wait to get more engaged in the Drupal community. What do I do? How do I do it? Uh, so I figured I'd wrap up and talk a little bit about how it is that you can get started. I said, there is no barrier to entry. Drupal is a duocracy. If you want to make something happen, you have to jump in, own it, and make it happen. All you have to do is get started, and there are so many resources out there to help you. You know, I said earlier, we are a community that wants you to get engaged, and we provide tremendous resources and help to do so. Showing up to events is a simple form of participation, a great opportunity to meet people and learn things. 
you know, we talked about the 500 meetups that happen every week around the world. There's meetups, there's three meetups in New York City where I live, including a Drupal drinks meetup. You can get together and have beers with your Drupal buddies and talk about problems. And believe me, that really helps solve problems. Um, <coughs> you know, there's Drupal camps, you know, events like today. So uh, meetups can draw, you know, anywhere from 10 to, say, 50 or 100 people. Camps like today draw, you know, typically in the 200 to, say, 1800 range, you know, um, there's business summits, right? This isn't just about technology. Maybe you're wearing a suit and tie or you're a business stakeholder or, you know, or, you're, or you're a site builder or you're, you're less interested in the technology components and you want to talk to people about how business, you know, Drupal is impacting their business and driving growth. Go to a Drupal uh, summit or, you know, a business day. We typically have a couple of those every year. And uh, I'm curious, who here has been to a DrupalCon? Awesome. So I'm largely preaching to the choir here. All right, we'll skip through this. Uh, you know, it is a spectacle. I don't know what else to say. I mean, it, to see you know three, four thousand Drupal developers running around at a conference, it is just you know, it's 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 vibrant. It, it it's it's really a remarkable experience. Uh, Barcelona DrupalCon is coming up September 21st through 25th. I highly recommend you check it out. And if you're interested in getting more engaged in the platform, there are sprints. So sprints, there's a sprint on Sunday as part of this camp. This is an opportunity to sit with your laptop out next to amazing Drupal people as well as, you know, you know, newbies working together with the laptops out. Many camps provide mentoring services or, you know, informally or formally. If you go to DrupalCon, the Friday of every week of DrupalCon is a community sprint. We have community mentors that will come in. You could have never installed an IDE. You could have never written a line of code in your life. You can do nothing about Drupal. They will literally sit with you, hold your hand, help you install the software, get you up and running, and walk you through your first contribution to Drupal. They have projects for everybody. You know, this isn't about just code. You know, there's opportunities to contribute pretty much on every level and every layer of Drupal. You know, if you want to do translations, we talked about you know, the French translation for this website, for the conference automated QA testing, you know, building on infrastructure tools like the underlying QA bot and testing infrastructure, marketing, UX, project management, I mean, issue queue farming, the list goes on. You don't need to be a developer, you know, you could help organize an event. Of course, code is critically important to Drupal. We highly recommend that you get engaged. The reality is, is that individuals and organizations don't do one of these things. They typically do some mix of these things across one or many of their resources. And if you can't do any of these or you have money, a great way that you can participate and support Drupal is by donating money or sponsoring a local conference and event, right? Win-win for you. I'm not asking for you to do anything that is going to help or benefit your business. You know, putting your, your logo, your name on a conference and event like this helps, the you know, helps you build that technology brand, helps get the word out about what you're doing, gives you an opportunity to come up on stage and say, hey, you know, we're a cool company doing great things with technology. Maybe you want to check us out as a client, as someone you want to come work for. So it helps you build that brand. Uh, I hope you guys are all aware of the Drupal 8 uh, Accelerate Fund. We're trying to get Drupal 8 release blockers finished to get Drupal 8 out the door. We're addressing, you know, the finishing touches, performance scalability, security, you know, the testing infrastructure. We are so close to our $250,000 goal. Uh, just go to drupal.org, D8 Accelerate, and you can donate and contribute to that fund and help us reach that mark. One thing I want to make sure is that you guys are taking credit for your work and that you're crediting others. Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of the new commit structure. I'm not going to get into the technical details, but when you make a contribution to Drupal, you can say, I did this, and I did this on my personal time, and I want the credit for it. Or you can say, I did this, and I work for Acquia, and Acquia paid me to do this contribution. And so you can give them credit as well. And perhaps we did this on behalf of a client. We did this for PAC-12, one of the organizations I work for that helps support the Drupal 8 Accelerate campaign. So you can say, I created this patch to Drupal or this documentation or whatever on behalf of Acquia and our client PAC-12. Why is that important? Well, because we're going to shift in the near future to new user profiles, and we're going to add organizational profiles. And I stole this from Jesus' uh, keynote. Uh, it's a mock-up. It's not real. Uh, this is where we're going. Um, you know, we're going to show who the top contributors to the platform are. We're going to highlight organizations and individuals that are going to be contributing to Drupal, and we're going to help you build that reputation and ensure that the word is getting out there. And as a community, it's going to give us really great insight into how Drupal comes together so that we can optimize and enhance the way that we approach building and maintaining the software so that you know, there are many great people that work for companies 
is that company actually paying them to work on Drupal, or are they doing it on their own personal time? Right? We need to really be able to clearly see who's funding what. And I think that's important, and you know, an important part of the transparency of open source, especially as like the commercial interests come into play. I think it's important that everyone's up front with you know, what they're doing and where they're going, so that everyone is is cool and kosher with it. So if you want to get more engaged in the community, uh, check out drupal.org/contribute. Tons of resources there, uh, including step-by-step -step ideas for first-time contributors and people that haven't written code. Literally, you know, it'll give you a task, something simple that you can take off and, and build. Um, if you don't want to come to an event or you're working on a project, there's tons of online resources to help you. It's unbelievable. Um, you know, create a Drupal.org account, hop on IRC. There's uh, you know, chats about you know, pretty much every topic, every location, groups.drupal.org. Right? It's how I find out about events like this. It's about how I learn about the community and what's going on. Um, core mentoring. This is another free program. Um, I know there are several people in Acquia's office at CTO um, that participate in this. They give you free help every week. We hold office hours. You can literally you know, get into a chat room with world-leading Drupal experts, and they're paid to sit there and help you for that period of time and get you up and running if you've never contributed to Drupal every week. So there literally is no excuse to get started. But I, I understand it can be <laughs> extremely intimidating, right? I've gone to code sprints. You know, I've had debates with you know, these people, and they are impressive and they can be challenging, um, and I can understand it can be daunting. But I assure you that if you're willing to learn, if you're willing to make an investment, and if you're going to contribute to the platform, there are thousands of people that are waiting there to help you, that are willing to make that investment to get you up to speed, because they know that you're going to become a great contributor. Sunita Williams, the commander of the International Space Station. Michael Phelps, the most decorated Olympian athlete of all time. Yo, Yo Ma, world famous cello player. These guys all have one thing in common. Any idea what it is? Google. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> that would be pretty awesome. Well, hey, the opportunity for them is, is there. They just have to do it. <laughs> um, each of them did the thing that they're famous for for the first time once, right? And so, you know, picture Yo, Yo Ma reaching out for that cello for the first time. Think about Michael Phelps wading to that pool for the first time long before he was an Olympian and an athlete. You know, and, 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 and I want to say, you can do it. You know, a, a really great example of this, Angie Byron, web chick who I talked about earlier, probably one of the most well-known people in the Drupal community. I don't know if you guys know this, but she got her start as a Google Summer of Code student. She hadn't really contributed to an open source project. She didn't know a lot about development. And over the last eight years, she has become one of the most famous, well-known women in technology. Uh, a magazine came out last year and said she's one of the top five most influential women in technology, along with people, along with people like Meg Whitman, CEO of HP. She's been on the cover of magazines like Linux Journal. Um, and Angie will tell you herself, and she's here in the community to help you get started. You know, If you're willing to jump in and make a contribution to Drupal, there are amazing folks like Angie who are waiting there for you and want to help you get started. So. Uh, thank you guys. I hope that uh, you, know, you guys are going to get even more engaged in the Drupal community. I thank you for your support and for coming here today. And I think we have a few minutes for questions before coffee. <laughs> Any questions? Up front. So, um, in putting together the Drupal North website in Drupal 8. Um, we ran into all kinds of interesting challenges, bugs, it's expected with beta software. Mm -hmm. It was an interesting ex learning experience from my point of view to, to notice that like when we, basically because you're not using any contrib components mm -hmm. in the build anymore, I found that it was um, somewhat intimidating for someone who's using Drupal for many, many years now mm -hmm. to switch over from like resolving problems in the contrib queue, which is mm -hmm. like, boxed in and small, and mm -hmm. switching over to the core issue queue where there's like, you know, if my error code doesn't show up in that issue, and there's mm -hmm. a, a number of issues, especially a couple of months ago in the core queue, yeah. um, it was a bit of a challenge to resolve. Mm -hmm. Do you have an opinion or any thoughts on 
I don't see this issue going, this, this greater issue, as, as many of the contrib stuff has moved into mm -hmm. court and makes a better product. Yep. But at the same time, it's made it, at least in my experience, harder to try and debug and solve those issues because it is, it's way more intimidating than pitch to post to the, the core issue queue mm -hmm. because, you know, it's got to be, you got to be polished, double, triple, triple check your post and all that before it goes up or else someone will... Yeah. Someone will politely, politely. correct you. <laughs> uh, are there any thoughts? Do you have any opinions or thoughts on how we can? So I guess this is uh, this is clearly an mm -hmm. issue that okay. I think is gonna that I think as a community we need to work on. Yep. Do you have any ideas or thoughts on how we could make core the core issue queue a little friendlier, a little easier, a little? Something a little, a little less intimidating. Yeah, um, I, I think it's a really great point. I didn't really get into the details of how Drupal is created. You know, there's the core of Drupal, and there are stringent standards for contributing to the core of Drupal. And the way that that's developed is very different than extending Drupal. Right, so if you you know anyone can create a contributed module to Drupal, you know, and, and you, you largely do that in a vacuum, right? As long as you follow the standards of the core, you can easily extend it. You know, there's minimal approval process to go up and, and launch a module. Um, and so building a module and extending Drupal for your needs is completely different from getting involved in core development. Um, and I think that you know I talked about you know the scalability of community and how we're getting more complex. You know this is something that we spent a lot of time thinking about. You know can we say decouple Drupal more? Can we you know the adoption of Symphony right building on top of other platforms and saying you know we're not going to build everything ourselves. You know think about scaling human collaboration right like we can't get all all get in a room and talk about something. Otherwise you, you know you just have a, a thousand different opinions right and so. Uh, they just did, they just I think published uh, better guidelines online about roles and responsibilities. You know, like um, what is a maintainer's role, a core maintainer's role? What is a committer's role? What are your responsibilities? And so I think that we're trying to help the community understand, you know, how you fit into the picture, so that we can avoid some of the the bike shedding or the tremendous back and forth. That we can streamline the process a little bit more and help people understand. Who's a product owner? Who's a decision maker? Because I think that's one of the challenges too, because we are a community and we're so welcoming and we're so about like ideas. It's really hard for someone to step up and say, I own this. I'm, the, I'm gonna make the tough decisions, balance the priorities. And there's a lot of back and forth and debate that just can go on and on and on until you know, someone comes in and, and you know, uh, and so we're, I think that we, you know through things like you know better clearly identifying roles and responsibilities, decoupling components so that these individual communities can focus on you know smaller components. Right? If we separate the database abstraction layer, we can get more people working about on on just that independently of the release cycle, say of the larger system. Now, adding complexity has challenges too, right? Because now all of a sudden you've created you know significant dependencies potentially with you know third parties like Symphony. You know, so there, there's there's risks as well as tremendous reward. And I think that's what we're trying to do now as a community and a lot of what Octo is focusing on is you know, trying to figure out how we refine that process. So. Can you speak to some of the challenges you face in your day-to-day -day evangelizing what's going people in the enterprise and the type of challenges and pushback you get from an enterprise client and all these people being different from scaling up any other software platform? Sure. So the, the resistance uh, and, and challenges that I face on a day-to-day -day basis uh, with respect to trying to engage organizations in open source, I think, you know, one of the biggest challenges is that, you know, typically I have a champion, right? It, it could be the CTO of the organization. It could be literally their technology leader. Um, but that, or, you know, that individual needs to get the buy-in and support of their CEO, like their CFO, their legal counsel, right? The entire executive team. And I think oftentimes a lot of what I, I need to do is help that individual, that champion, navigate that process. So we, um, Doug Gaff, who is the senior director of technology for NPR, uh, he, he left the organization last year. They were a founding member of Large Scale Drupal. Uh, he wrote up a guide based on his experience uh, at NPR and some other big organizations and walking them through the process of adopting and leveraging open source and creating an open source policy. And it wasn't like this is you know, exactly what I didn't know how to do it. It was sort of like a framework of how to approach and you know, hear the arguments that your legal team is going to come back to you with. And here's topics that you, you know, here, here's you know, things that you need to read up on and understand to make the 
compelling arguments. So what I try and do is enable these champions to navigate their organization, but I think that's their challenge is that there are people in technology that get it. Open source can be kind of counterintuitive, right? The idea that working together with your peers, collaborating, you know, is going to save you time, is going to, you know, do things faster when you're, you know, in a community. I mean, it, a lot of people don't understand it. And until you see the benefits, until you see the cost dropping, you know, they, they just like, you know. And so I think that's honestly the biggest challenge is it's changing behavior, right? Changing behavior in large corporate organizations that have been very successful doing what they're doing and are either extremely resistant to change or find it very difficult to engineer and make change, right? The big boat, you know, making make the turn. And for these organizations, adopting things like Agile and Scrum and, you know, transparent methodologies that foster collaboration can be extremely challenging because it can often be at odds with the current culture and operating mechanisms for their company. And really, it's about, you know, for a big organization, you know, you, you can't just go out and say, you know, oh my gosh, the disasters I've seen of companies that say, you know, okay, we're open source. You know, everyone come in Monday morning and we're an open source company. That's not how it works, right? You know, you need, you know, like anything, you need to make some quick wins. You know, you need to engineer change. You need to go team by team. You, you need, you know, you need to take a very concerted approach to making this happen across your organization. And if you just try and make an overnight change, you know, it, it typically is, is a disaster. Right? This is about learning new capabilities and competencies and training your team and changing the way you and your organization work. And it can be very painful and it can be very challenging for certain organizations and people, especially when they've been doing things you know, very differently for you know, however long. So um, yeah, it is, it is an uphill battle. Um, you know, honestly, uh, you know, the battle that we've won in open source is that people download and use it. You know, and then we can commercialize and, and grow businesses on it. And the next generation is, you know, what you see in the high tech sector is, you know, you know, those organizations are contributing to and getting engaged much more so. But you know, it's you know, we need to get the you know the rest of the world uh, collaboratively engaged in this process. Do we have time for one more? No, I think we've got that. Yeah, I think we'll. Uno mas. One John. John? What's, yeah. what's your guess for DrupalCon North America 2017? Because 16 is in New Orleans. New York City. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, I, 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 I don't have any idea uh, what, uh, what it's going to be. Uh, I, or should it be? I love the fact that we rotate Drupal cons around major cities. One, it affords me an opportunity to travel and get to, to meet different markets and people, you know, and it helps us bring Drupal to different audiences. Uh, but I, I really like when we, when we go to major cities. You know, I, I would love to go back to San Francisco. Right? You know, I think we'd have five, 6,000 people. We'd double the size of the conference if we went back to San Francisco in 2016. Um, 2017, sorry. Um, so you know, I'd like to see us go back to a major city, New York City, we've never done, or San Francisco, you know, a major tech hub, to, to, you know, especially with you know, where Drupal is you know, today. Um, that, that would be my preference. Awesome. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, sir. Sorry. Okay, uh, so sessions start sharp at 10 o'clock, so if you want to get coffee or things or hit the washrooms near the elevators and uh, so on, uh, please do so. Um, look for the signs for the rooms and uh, have fun for the rest of the, of the day. All right, thanks. Sorry, I didn't actually get to check on this uh, and see what you got, but we'll uh, put up the recording and I'll watch the whole thing. So. How do I stop it?